Hi, welcome to another In Conversation video. In this episode, I catch up with Kevin Robertson, the head falconer at the Loch Lomond Bird of Prey Centre, whilst at the Valley Falcon Races. Hi Kevin, yeah, thanks for chatting with me to today. Um, no so, can you first tell me how long have you been following me for? Uh, roughly about 17 years. Marvellous. Um, getting it by pure chance, to be honest. Yeah. Um, my dad, me and my dad started volunteering at a bird play centre probably about year 17, nearly 18 years ago. And um, just learned from there. Went up by pure accident because my dad's an electrician by trade. and. Um, we never left, every weekend we'd go up and volunteer, learned how to do it and then um, the guy who owned the centre unfortunately was diagnosed with cancer and passed away with cancer in 2006 uh, and now my dad owns the centre, cashed right. on his pension and uh, took it over and yeah, we've never looked back since. So well, that's that's been, um, but I've uh, been flying birds for 17 years so uh, yeah, you get the bug and that's it. You do, don't you? You, you get do addicted it. in many ways. You do, it's, it takes over your life. Well, what I love as well about Falk, when you could say it for almost anything you do, it's the way that you never stop learning. Even when you yeah. get to a point where you think, gosh, I now know so much, I've had so much experience, you'd never stop no, learning. No, you don't I always say to people as well, it's like, it's one of these things that you can, you will never, you will never know everything. Mm. And mm. no matter how long you have been doing it, you will always learn something new every day. Every day is a school day, so yeah. even like for being here, like these guys flying these row crows out here, you will always learn something new. So there's like this, why I'm here this yeah. weekend. Hopefully, learn how to fly one of them properly. Yeah. Um, and everything is like even just like even a bird you've flown for four or five years, you'll always learn something new off of it, either every day, every week, and being out with it like six, seven days, a, days a week. What like I am when it's hunting season, I'm out near enough every day when yeah. my bird's hunting, and that way they're getting better and you're getting better because yeah. you're, you're learning from each other. And yeah, it's, there's there's not a sport like it in the world. I don't think. No, I think you're, I think you're right. It's so unique. It's yeah. very unique and. It's um, very, it can be an opinionated sport. A lot of people are quite, when it comes to newbies coming into it, are a bit thingy of it, but I suppose it's the way they've kind of been brought up and they, they kind of see things. But mm. I'm all for one for teaching people and getting new people into sport because if we don't, then it's just going to die out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's one of the it's one of these field sports that there's a lot going on and a lot of people are quite against it in a way. Mm. Um, but we just need to shed good light on falconry and there's a lot of good things going on there with falconry and showing people what is actually happening. And I agree. I agree. Education is very important. Do you think that there is a an upcoming new generation with more, let's say, people who are maybe vegan, maybe who are maybe wanting that balance, the, 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 dare I say, the left-winged group, that's what some people say. Do you think there is a rising group of that new generation which makes it even more important to actually yeah. educate the reality yeah, of what we're is, doing? there is, there's definitely. And, and believe it or not, I have, I've had a few vegans actually work for me. Right, yeah, yeah me too, and, yeah. You know, and they come in and they're all, they're all very animal oriented. Mm. They're, they're doing a zoology course or something, they're there for experience with birds of prey and they'll come in. And they're fine working with birds and they're like, great, but when it comes to preparing food for birds, yeah. that's the big thing. But I've had people come in and they're like, oh no, can't do that. And by the end of the time that we've been there, they're doing it. Mm. They, they then see a side of things that they never they never seen bef yeah. before. But running a bird of prey centre, I get stuff on a daily basis, whereas you're, you'll never keep 100% of your customers happy and you'll always be, have people come in that are against the certain methods that falconers use, like a tethering birds and things like that. But I've had people come in and walk straight back out because there's birds tethered on right. perches. And it's... They've not asked questions or given me the chance to be able to tell them why that's being done, and they just you know, they see it as disgust and they walk straight yes. out, and that's that's where the education thing comes in. Of course, and that's the whole reason why we're there. Yes, to yeah. educate people uh, about 
all these different birds and methods and falconry that have been u- getting used for like 4,000 years. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. So that's a big thing. Education and conservation, that's what we are mostly about. Brilliant. Well, we'll finish with a potentially contentious question. Have you got a favourite bird that the centre like to fly? Uh, yeah, but you've asked that a lot and it's yeah, always difficult. Well, I always kind of say I'm not really allowed to have favourites. Uh, yeah. But you do, like, I, I would have said, I've got, I've got favourites of, I would have said I've got three top birds. Um, I've got my young, my young male with Harris Hawk for hunting wise, um, he's my favourite bird. Um, just because he's my main hunting bird, things like that. Um, my favourite bird to fly is my young Jersey Falcon, um, the, the one I'm just hopefully going to be getting on the row crow. And my favourite demonstration bird, believe it or not, is my turkey vulture. Right. Yeah, so got a turkey vulture there um, maybe about eight, nine weeks ago. And um, we got them so in for conservation and education on the vulture species mm. and what's happening with vultures around the world because yeah. they really are in dire straits just now. Yeah. Um, uh, and what we've done with him is we've used them on two demonstrations a day and we've been raising money for Vulpro in South Africa uh, and today he's nearly raised £1,500 in four weeks worth of demonstrations Right. Um, and all that money will be sent over to Vulpro at the end Fantastic. of the year to help them build a vulture hospital um, they've hoped to try and do all their veterinary stuff on site uh, safe taking the vultures to the, vet, the local vets and it costs them money and things mm-hmm. if they can do everything on site then it's more beneficial to them so we've backed them this year um, so we'll be sending a a lovely lump sum of money over to them and then next year we'll pick, pick up another vulture conservation yeah. charity yeah. one in India or somewhere like that and then we'll just so we're using him to help or help vulture charities because if we don't do something about it now um, no, it couldn't be too long until they're completely disappeared you know the old world vultures are facing a really hard time of it just now when you look at the numbers in uh, India um, last 30 to 40 years 30 million vultures have d- mm. deceased in mm. India, though the numbers are starting to climb now because Dick Lafenac was the main effect to them. It's been banned seven years ago, it's ran its course, so now they're releasing vultures round about Nepal and things like that and the numbers are starting to climb, but it's in South Africa. Um, the majority of vulture species there have declined by between 80 and 93% in the last 30 to 40 years, so they're having a real hard time of it. Mm, so mm. if we don't do something about it now, then all these amazing, amazing birds yeah. Of course, it's, it's so important for not just the birds, the ecosystem, yeah, the whole well, lot. People vital. don't realise the effect that actual vultures have on mm. humans, and by taking them out of the equation, it does affect humans. And I always kind of tell people on displays about, um, especially in India, so... With the vultures disappearing in the numbers they have in India, um, it, what's happening is that cattle were uh, die, uh, chose with this stick with and the vultures would eat that carcass and stick with fennac, they're allergic to it, so they'd pass away. So now it's ran its course, it's fine, but these cattle are sacred, so where they die, they lie, so they're still dying with natural causes and things. With vultures not being around in the numbers that they were, something else has to eat them. So that was wild dogs. So the wild dog population went up. The wild dog population went up. The babies cases and humans has went up. Uh, just because vultures aren't there to digest it. Yeah. Things like that, because our stomach, the stomach acid is so strong they can digest anthrax, botulism, rabies, things like they don't that. Re- so people don't realise that the vultures are the yeah. cleaners that actually help yeah. to balance it all out. Mm. It's the same red kites in this country. Yes. Red kites were basically the vultures of our, mm. our world. Um, and then they start, then they disappeared and they've been reintroduced and they're here back in numbers. I'm pretty sure I've just seen one not that long ago yeah. flying, up, flying above up there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. They're, they're, um, they're absolutely amazing birds, but anything like that, just when you know, go back to when I first started doing this, um, somebody asked me if I wanted a vulture, I would have told them no. Yeah. Uh, I would have wanted one of them for you, like, birds, they're not real birds, I pray, see now, it's by far my favourite demonstration yeah. bird ever. They're just so unique, and great, great birds. Brilliant. Well, anyway, Kevin, thank you very much thank for talking to me, and no best of luck with you, everything you're doing with the, the vulture awareness and work, and, uh, and the centre for, for next year as well, so thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks very much, thank Cheers. you.